Hello, this is Let's Talk About Myths, baby. I'm Liv, your host and the person who can only come up with so many clever introductions for herself. I've hit a wall today, friends. But that won't stop me from telling you one of the most anticipated stories of Greek mythology, because today marks the first episode of Women's History Month. Before we begin, though, a quick announcement. As many of you know from my various social medias, I've opened a new merch store. This one goes through Threadless, which is better for you and it's better for me. I'll be adding new merch soon. I've got some brilliant designer friends on the case. But for now, March 8th is International Women's Day, and I think that's as good a time as any to run my first sale. So starting Friday morning, Pacific time, because I got to do it manually, and ending Monday morning, Pacific time, there will be a sale on all products on my merch store. I'll announce on social media too, but now you know. Head over to mythsbaby.threadless.com to shop the sale. And so, in honor of Women's History Month and International Women's Day this Friday, I give you this not-so-mini... Mini-myth. Heroine of ancient Greece, the OG Wonder Woman, Atalanta. Atalanta was born to a man who wanted a son, because, of course, all men wanted sons. We don't hear much about her mother, which is not at all shocking. This is about how her father wanted a boy. What was the point of having only a daughter? There would be no one to hold the family name, there would be no strength or heroism in the family. It's desperately depressing if you only have a daughter. Atalanta's father felt this deeply. He felt this anger and disappointment so deeply that Atalanta's father left her out to die when she was only a baby. She was exposed, left on the side of a mountain with no food or water, destined to die either of the elements or wild animals. He was a lovely man, her father, a family man. But we know better than to believe that a child left to die by exposure actually does. Instead, this trope serves as the starting point for countless heroes. This case is no different. You see, a bear, a female bear, takes pity on Atalanta and nurses her, keeps her warm, and allows her to grow into a strong and brave girl. When Atalanta had grown into a young girl, one raised by a bear, and so fearless and strong and straight-up badass, she was found by some hunters. I'm going to just trust and assume this isn't because they hunted her mother bear, and simply they'd come across her one day in the forest. But either way, Atalanta was found by hunters and was brought to live with them. She would, once again, be living with humans. Atalanta learned more from these men than anyone imagined, eventually surpassing them in her skill. It's told that one day she was out in the woods and she was spotted by two centaurs. Normally, being pursued by centaurs would lead only to the human's death. You must remember that Chiron is the exception to the rule. Chiron is not a true centaur. Most centaurs are vicious monsters who want only to cause death and destruction, but also they're half horse, so at least they look cool. But badass female Atalanta had no issue with these centaurs. No, she knew how to handle the situation. Instead of running from them as almost anyone else would, she stood her ground. She turned to face the centaurs pursuing her. She put an arrow in her bow. She aimed, and she shot. She killed both centaurs before they could even reach her. Seriously, she's a fucking badass. And she's a she. You may remember Atalanta's name because I've spoken of her once before. She's the only woman to have joined one of the more famous heroes on his heroic journeys. You see, there was a terrifying and just crazy dangerous boar terrorizing the country of Caledon. This was a curse placed by Artemis, who'd been overlooked by the king Aeneas during a sacrifice to the other gods. How could you possibly do that, knowing the stakes of angering the gods is beyond me? But he did. And so, Artemis is fucking pissed. She sends this boar to just 
devastate the area. It kills livestock and people, and man, it was just a real troublemaker, that boar. It also becomes known as the Caledonian boar, due to the area it was fucking up. King Aeneas, and this is Aeneas with an O, it's a totally different spelling, this is not Aeneas who founded Rome, just to clarify that. He had to put together a team of heroes to kill the Caledonian boar. Already so many of his men had failed, and he really needed someone to succeed. A team, and a team of the best of the best, seems his only option. There assembled a group of some of the bravest men of Greece, and of course, one woman. Many of them would later sail with Jason on his ship, the Argo, becoming the Argonauts. Atalanta joins this group as the only woman, but the woman who is matched in skill and strength and heroism with the men. Fuck yeah. When Atalanta walks into the room, joining the men who have all gathered to go after the Caledonian boar, she turns heads. Not only is she a woman amongst these heroes, but she looks awesome. She has on a nice robe with a sparkly buckle, she has her hair up in a feminine but tough sort of style, and she has an ivory bow hung by her side. She looks the part. But you know, men of this time are quite obviously confused by her. She's a woman, and a beautiful one at that, but here she is acting like a man. They're left quite perplexed, debating whether they are attracted to her or see her as boyish. I imagine this was quite a confusing time. But nevertheless, she persisted. One of the men, though, had no trouble admitting that he is very much taken with her. Maleager falls in love with Atalanta right there. She's strong and beautiful, and she knows how to handle her bow. He was in. Even though he was very eager to accept her for who she is, Atalanta isn't having it. She doesn't care for men and has vowed never to marry. I wish I could say whether this is because she preferred women, but that's not clear, nor would it be since that aspect of the story would likely never get passed down. In any event, Maleager is left loving Atalanta from afar and being her constant defender against the shittier of the men in the group. For instance, many of the men assembled have no desire to go after the boar with Atalanta with them. They feel it's beneath them to have a woman and that she'll only cause trouble. Ah, yes, what lovely times these were. But Maleager defends her, and finally he's convinced the more fragile men that she'll be an asset and they must go after the boar. And this was the right fucking decision, because when they finally do come upon the boar, two of the group die before they can even figure out what's happening. Many of the men panic, swinging and throwing their weapons madly. Another man dies from this, not even from the fucking boar. Just from spears flying. But Atalanta knows what the fuck is up. She keeps her cool and she wounds the boar so badly that it lays still long enough for Maleager to come in and stab it. And so the boar is dead, and technically speaking, its death is caused by Maleager. But he wasn't kidding himself. He knows it's Atalanta who defeated the Caledonian boar. He insists that she gets the honor of keeping the skin of the boar, that she was the one who killed it. Maleager is a fucking ally, if I've ever seen one. But the power of the patriarchy runs deep. You see, when Maleager was a baby, he was cursed by the fates. They'd come to his mother, Althea, as she held her newborn son, and thrown a log on the fire. They told her that the baby would die when the log had turned to ash. As soon as the fates were gone, Althea grabs the log from the fire and hides the charred piece away where it can't be burned any further. And so, because of this action, Maleager is able to grow up and be a fucking awesome ally to Atalanta. But as I said, it runs deep. 
Althea's brothers, Maligar's uncles, have also been part of this hunting trip, and they are particularly pissed that Atalanta, a woman, has been given the skin of the boar and holds the title for having killed it. This cannot stand. She's a woman, damn it. They announce that they won't let it happen. They won't let Atalanta keep the skin, and they accuse Maligar of deciding the whole thing on his own. So Maligar kills them. He is that devoted to Atalanta. Althea, though, hears about what her son has done to her brothers, and in her anger, she takes out the charred log. She throws it back on the fire. It burns and burns until it turns to ash, and when it does, Maligar simply drops dead. Maligar died because he had the gall to support a woman. Though Maligar is tragically killed for being on her side, this is not the end of Atalanta's story. Yes, this woman has more than one story. Can you even imagine? But, well, again, the patriarchy runs deep, so don't get too excited. Atalanta has so many men wanting to marry her. It seems there are indeed men in Greek mythology who could appreciate a strong woman. Reassuring, isn't it? But again, even though there were so many men who wanted to marry Atalanta... She had no desire to ever marry. It just wasn't for her. As a woman, though, it's very hard to keep this going. Everyone around you will tell you you need to marry. It's what you do. So Atalanta has to come up with a reason why she can't. She announces that she'll only marry a man who can beat her in a foot race. She knows no one can, that she's the fastest. So it seems a safe enough way to handle the constant onslaught of dudes. But there's always an asshole who cheats, right? Melanion is the asshole who cheats. Melanion decides he simply must have Atalanta, but he knows he's never going to beat her in a foot race. She's so fucking fast. So instead, he uses Aphrodite. Aphrodite, you see, has a thing for fucking with people who don't appreciate love. Because Atalanta doesn't want to marry, she's an easy target for Aphrodite. Aphrodite gives Melanion three golden apples, and he plans to race Atalanta. And they do. The race starts, and of course, Atalanta is immediately ahead. She's beating Melanion quite amazingly, just zipping along. That is, until he throws one of those fucking golden apples out in front of her. It's shiny and it's beautiful, and Atalanta slows down long enough to examine it and bring it with her. Still, though, even with this delay, she's certainly faster than Melanion, and they keep going. But then he throws another fucking apple. Once again, Atalanta slows enough to grab it, and Melanion gets ahead of her. Atalanta, though, as I've mentioned endlessly now, is fucking fast. She quickly gets back in the lead, and the finish line is nearing. So Melanion throws his third apple. And that's it. They're too close to the finish line. Atalanta stops for the apple, and that's all it takes. Melanion reaches the finish line and has officially beaten her in the foot race. It's over. She's forced to marry him. And that, quite unsurprisingly, is the end to Atalanta's stories. She's a wife now. How can she continue on with her heroic ways? This story hurts me. It hurts, but I still love it. There's a woman who's strong and heroic and amazing, and she's a woman. The story of Atalanta and the Caledonian boar and Maligar is just wonderful. I love her. I love Maligar. It's great. And then it's ruined. Is Atalanta's fate something that came naturally in the progression of this story? I would say no. Is it instead based on some nonsensical notion of women thought up by men? that women can't resist something shiny, even if it causes their own demise? What a dark fucking thought. 
based on the character of Atalanta that we're actually given, it doesn't seem reasonable that she would be stupid enough to let herself lose the race just because there's a fucking shiny apple on the ground. Honestly. But then, it's difficult to parse details like this because it's not as though the women were telling the stories. The men told the stories. They told the story of a strong, independent woman who was enough by herself and didn't need a man. And then they told the story of her being forced to marry a man because she saw something shiny. It's gross. So let's all make a point of remembering Atalanta and Maleager and the Caledonian boar. And fuck Melanion and the foot race. Thank you all for listening. I'm so glad I finally told this story, even if it ends stupidly. It's still a badass woman doing badass things. And that's a rare thing in these stories, especially if we're talking mortal women. So we've got to hold on to what we've got. This version I've told comes from, quite appropriately, the queen of Greek mythology, Edith Hamilton. Her version is in the form of a chapter in the heroes section that is devoted to Atalanta entirely. Meanwhile, Robert Graves has another version with many differences that sets Atalanta as a kind of side character who doesn't do much. But Edith Hamilton's is derived from Apollodorus, so we're trusting her because that's a sound source, and also because I want a version where the woman is the hero. God damn it. Happy Women's History Month. I'm so glad I get to talk about this shit all year round, but I feel particularly grateful for it right now. I'm Liv, and I love a badass woman, and this shit. (laughs) 